How to get over obsessing about anything. Hi, my name is Leah Chantel, and today I'm tackling obsession and how do you get over obsessing about something? Because when something becomes an obsession, usually at that point, it's unless you've picked something to obsess over that's very high, high value, like you're obsessed with giving wonderful service to people or you're obsessed with growing, even those things, those are very high values, but you possibly could overdo it. It's possible. So you want to get over obsessing about stuff. So let's begin by defining how do you obsess about stuff and what happens in your mind when you're going through that? So what happens when you're obsessing about something and you're trying to anchor it on an outcome you want? Let's say you want a marriage. Just for example, um, what happens when you obsess is that you want to control a situation and you're thinking about the future over and over and over again when you want a marriage, right? And when you're thinking about the future obsessively over and over and over again. What happens is that you're not living in the present moment. So you're more likely to not respond to people in a very human, loving, compassionate way. So you're not at your best. Let's say you're obsessed with like a financial transaction that you're looking to make and you can't afford it yet. And you're just working and working and working and saving and saving money and hoping that it's going to happen one day. I mean, to some extent, there's nothing wrong with that. It's good to organize. It's good to plan and work towards things that you care about, but you can overdo it. You can really sacrifice the good things that are happening in your life in the moment for that obsession, for that future thing. And then when you arrive and you actually get that future thing, you probably won't appreciate it because you're on to obsessing about the next thing. Or maybe you're obsessed over your past. Maybe you feel slighted by your parents and you're obsessing over and over and over again that like, how could they raise me the way they did? How could they make me work when I was only a teenager or full time? Or how could they not pay for my education or whatever the complaint is? If we're obsessing and focusing too much on the past, then again, we're missing our present. We're not living fully. We're not showing up as our best selves. So how can we cure obsession? So the interesting thing about obsession is that it holds a secret for our growth and for our development. So a lot of people don't know what they want, but they'll obsess over something they can't control. Like, when am I going to get married? Or when am I going to finally tell my parents off? Or when am I going to finally get that dream job that I've been hoping for and move out of wherever I'm living and move to this next city? So if you want to stop obsessing about something that is unlikely to happen, let's say, for example, it's a crush. Maybe you've been obsessing over a person and they're not responding very well and you know it's probably not going to happen, but a part of you is kind of addicted to tr keep trying. The good thing about obsession is it holds the keys to what you really want. So if you're not sure about what you really, really want on a deep level and you're kind of fixed on an obsessive outcome, what you can kind of do is analyze that outcome and kind of dissect what deeper yearning is really there that you're really looking to create. Let's say you're obsessed with getting married with a particular person. Let's say it's that. Well, what is it about marriage that you're trying to get? Do you like marriage because of the intimacy? Do you like it because of the security? Do you like feeling in control? Like, what is it about that outcome that you really appreciate the most? Like, what needs are being met? And then what you can do instead of trying to obsess on an outcome that you can't control is you can kind of dissect your needs. Do I want to feel more secure or am I looking for more adventure? Am I looking for more love? Do I want to grow? Like figure out what exact needs you're after when you're obsessing about X, Y, and Z that you can't control. 
and then find a different way to meet your needs. Let's say you're very obsessed with buying a house for a particular partner because you want to contribute and be a good partner, but you can't really afford the house no matter how hard you try to save money. You're not quite there and the housing market's too high or whatever, and then you feel disappointed that you can't give that to your partner. Well, that isn't the end of the story. Maybe there are other ways that you can meaningfully contribute to your partner that doesn't require you to work your butt off trying to get a house, right? Maybe you can contribute by listening. Maybe you can contribute by actually showing up on time when they ask you to show up somewhere to meet them. You know, the, these things people overlook, but they mean a lot to other people and they build healthy relationships. And rather than try to obsess about the thing that's out of reach, like you can still keep working towards it and trying. There's nothing wrong with having ambition and working towards something. But when you get obsessed, that's when it lowers the quality of your life because you're stuck in your head. You're like, oh, if only I had this or that, then I would be the successful person. And what you may want to do instead is kind of adjust your expectations. Go, yes, I am working towards that. This is what I want. And I'm okay if it takes longer than I expected, or I'm okay with this other result because this other result also meets my needs. It's also important to realize what values and qualities are important to you. Maybe you're obsessed with a person because they represent something about you that you haven't fully expressed. So let's say, for example, you're a well-behaved girl and you're very attracted to a bad boy. Well, maybe it's not really the bad boy that you want to obsess about or go after. Maybe what you really want is to find some way to kind of be a little bit more creative or be a little bit more naughty in your life in a healthy way. You know, maybe you're being too rigid and too hard on yourself and your expectations and you really just want to express yourself in a different way in life or create a more interesting, beautiful life. When you figure out these sort of needs and goals and you develop those qualities that you're attracted to within yourself, then you're gonna build that happier, higher quality of life. You're going to get those needs met, not because you're chasing after a person and behaving needy, you're gonna have your needs met because you've become the person that you wanna become. And ultimately that's what we have control over in life. There are so many things that can happen, like even houses can get crazy expensive and maybe it's just too far out of reach for some people. But what we can control is who we become. And when we work on those qualities and we become who we want to be in life, that's when we have actually got the best shot at doing the bigger things that may seem out of reach. Rather than obsess about it and try to control the outcome, you can kind of have a healthy expectation that you're working towards something and yet you're enjoying life. You're living in the present moment and you're being a good person and that's your highest value. That's your highest satisfaction. And then if you get the big goal, then that's just enhancing your quality of life, but it's not the point of life. I think we just get so hung up on these obsessions or maybe we're really angry about how somebody treated us, right? Maybe somebody treated us unfairly, they took our money or they said something humiliating and then we get obsessed and obsessed and obsessed about this. And maybe what we need to do is look at how you're showing up in relationships. Maybe it's time to read more about what healthy relationships look like, or consult an expert, or go look for a new partner. Maybe you've got enough information and you're ready and you need to actually begin the process of looking for a new person who suits you better and articulate to yourself what qualities are most important to you when you're looking for a partner. Also, any side of ourselves that we suppress will become very attracted to in the outer world. So let's say you're a very analytical person and you've suppressed your creative side, all of a sudden you're gonna be very attracted to artists and people who are following their passion in life because that's the side that you suppressed in yourself. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're an artist, 
but you just want some more security in your life. And so you actually become attracted to the person who has that security when really you need to build it for yourself. Maybe you need to save more money and create security for yourself rather than obsess about somebody else who appears to have it. So when we really self-reflect and we understand the things that we're in our head about and are obsessing about are just our unmet needs that we kind of need to address in a different, more creative way in our life, that's when we can break the pattern of obsessing and start living more in the moment. I've struggled with this a lot too. I find my mind is going on loop over and over and over again. I wanna create this result, I wanna do that. I have these goals and these things I wanna get done by the end of the day, but really what I need to do is be in the moment, do the thing that I'm doing with an excellent quality of focus in that moment and then move on to the next thing when it's its proper moment, rather than try to fast track it or think ahead and be in my own head <laughs> thinking about all the things that I have to do. But we are all a bit like that, right? So the key is we wanna be in the moment. That's when we're not obsessing. That's when we're really engaged in life. And when we're thinking about the future, it's okay. We can think about it, we can plan, but once we've set a plan and we've decided, then we go back to living it. We go back to focusing on how we can show up as our best self in that moment and leave the plan, not forget about it, but just let it go until it's time to plan again and work on it again. I hope you all enjoyed my video about how to get over obsession. If you have any comments or experiences about this, I'd be really curious to see that in the comments below. If you liked the video, please press like and don't forget to hit subscribe to see more videos on topics related to intuition, even thinking or overthinking, confidence and relationships. I hope you're all having an amazing week and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Take care.